At Carleton University's Immersive Media Studio in Ottawa, Stephen Fai and his team of graduate students use laser scanners to create three-dimensional models and simulations. When this technology known as point cloud was first introduced, it was strictly used for construction purposes. But Dr. Fai found new innovative ways to put it to use in fields such as molecular biology, resource management, and heritage conservation. One of his projects involves building a three-dimensional model of the Algonquin First Nations community known as Kitigan Zibi. Over the last four years, we've been training people to, uh, to work in building information modeling, um, data acquisition at a very uh, high level of, of accuracy. In the case of Kitigan Zibi, um, over the years, they haven't archived the actual drawings, for example. So what we're currently doing is going on site with the information that we have Remeasuring all of the buildings, scanning them with the laser scanner to test our, our measurements, and building new models of those, of those buildings, new models of the infrastructure. This model is meant to accurately represent the community's land, from architecture to agriculture, so that the community can manage their property and resources more efficiently. The Conservation Directorate also recruited Dr. Fai and his associates to scan and document the interior of Ottawa's Parliament buildings for architects and engineers. Dr. Fai and his team use a similar approach to help restore a casbah in Morocco. Dr. Mario Santana Quintero and his students use photogrammetry to survey and reproduce a model of the fortress to help conservation specialists with its restoration. On the other side of the lab, graduate students Nico and Martin use point cloud technology and the same animation software they use in the movies to create a three-dimensional model of a cell membrane. Over the last uh, eight months, we started to move into simulations where the, um, we're using the models that we've created of the, of the various lipid species, but we're now introducing physical properties to those models. So we're able to take mathematical formulas and insert them into the different uh, connections in the model and then begin to simulate on what a cell membrane, a lipid membrane, might actually look like because no one's ever seen a lipid mem membrane. So another interesting challenge, how do you represent something no one has ever seen? This lipid membrane simulation will redefine the way people think about a cell's structure, replacing traditional static representations of membranes with more realistic and dynamic versions will help scientists better understand how these complex structures work.